Right, now based on energy transfer, so as we have seen in the video one, when energy is have when energy starts from the input, then it uses pathways and it transformed into different forms of energy. So sometimes it is transformed into the useful energy and sometimes the energy is being wasted or being dissipated. So to calculate the efficiency, we should be well aware of what energy is a useful energy and what energy is being wasted. So here is an example. So you can see we will describe the situation before and after in terms of what is reacting, what is happening to the amount of energy in the various energy store and why. So before unburned fuel, so there is more oxygen cold soup. So chemical energy is more than energy in thermal store because the chemical energy is not being used up yet. After the fuel is less because it's been burned down, more carbon dioxide is produced, um, hot soup, hotter air. So the chemical energy store is less but thermal energy store is higher. So there are different ways um, in which we can reduce the wasted energy by using the bearings to, to change the sliding friction into rolling friction. By using lubricants between the surface, we can reduce the energy waste. By using insulation, we can reduce the heat energy loss. By using the smooth surfaces, we can use the, um, we can stop the uh, dissipation of energy. So, Efficiency is very important to calculate. So we know that efficiency is the amount of useful energy output from the device. So what values do you think we will need to know to calculate the efficiency of a device? One is amount of useful energy output. And second, total amount of energy input. So how much amount of energy is being transferred into useful energy? We will not consider here the waste amount of energy. So that's called the Sankey diagram, which helps us to understand the input energy, output energy, and useful and wasted energy. So on the left-hand side of the arrow, where electrical energy is 100 joules, that is the input energy. On the right-hand side, the top arrow, which is light energy, 10 joule, this is the useful energy, and 90 joule is the wasted energy. So the arrow downward shows the wasted energy and the equation of efficiency is useful energy output divided by total energy input so by using this equation we can calculate some question some um, efficiency of some questions so in this question you can see an incandescent light bulb is supplied with 100 joule of energy it turns 17 joules into light how efficient it is so 100 joule is my input energy and um, 17 joule is useful. So 17 divided by 1000 is 0 0.17 efficiency. But if I want to calculate the efficiency in terms of percentage, I need to multiply this with 100. So the efficiency of this bulb is 17%. Now you can pause this video, use this equation, and quickly calculate the efficiency of this energy saving light bulb good well done if you got the correct answer so useful energy is 17 joules total energy is 30 joules and you calculated with 100 to calculate the efficiency which is 57 percent um, here are some exam questions um, some calculation in the table um, I want you to pause this video for five minutes and calculate the efficiency sometimes wasted energy and fill in the table according to your calculation well done if you come up with the answers let's mark your answers Well done if you got all answers correct. Now we are going to learn about power. So power is the rate 
at which work is done, how fast something is being done. The more powerful something is, the faster it can do work and so the faster it can transfer energy. Mathematically, the equation for power is work divided by time. And the unit for power is the watts or joules per second. So one watt is equal to one joule per second. Let's do the example. So a lawnmower engine does 10 kilojoule of work in 10 seconds. So again, 10 kilojoule is not the standard unit. We have to convert this into joules. So one kilo means thousand joules. So 10,000 divided by 10, 10 is seconds. And then the power will be 1000 watts. Here is another example. You can pause the video and carefully look on the units to calculate the power by using the equation. Well done if you got the correct answer. Again, I have to convert the units. Well, so 12 kilojoules means 12,000 joules and 2 minutes means 120 seconds. So your answer is 100 watts. Well done. Now you can pause this video and fill in the space in the statements below to complete the sentence. Use the words, numbers or units from the box provided using each one only once. Well done. You can mark your answers now. Some other questions you can fill in the equation by using the tri equation triangle. You can pause the video and do your calculations to complete the table. Well done. You can mark your answers now. Brilliant. Well done. So we are done. Here is a bigger picture of all the topics. So by the by the end of this video, you should be able to learn about compare the thermal conductivities of materials and relate to uses. You should also be able to describe the behavior of particles in material as temperature increases. And finally, you should be able to explain the specific heat capacity of different materials. So first of all, we will learn about conduction. Conduction is a process of transferring heat energy. How did the energy move along the rod? As we know, the rod is made out of some particles and all the particles in solids are close to each other, um, but they are always vibrating on their own position. When you start heating the rod, the heat transfer from one particle to the other particle and the particles get more energy and vibrate more. Particles also bump into each other and by bumping into each other and due to their vibration, they pass their heat energy along. So due to the vibration and particles uh, moving around, um, the heat energy is transferred. So the thermal energy is passed through the rod as the particle bumps into each other. The entire rod eventually heats up and this is called conduction. So you can pause this video and try to fill in the blanks. You can discuss with your partners, use the words Welcome back. So we can try together. When we heated the metal rod, the particles received more energy. This, mean, this meant they vibrate more and bumped into each other. As they bumped into each other, they passed on some of their energy. This means the heat or thermal energy moved through the rod. Eventually, the rod heated up. We could see the rod got hotter as the vaseline melted. This method, the drawing pins fall off. The movement of thermal energy like this is called conduction. 
Well done if your all answers were correct. This is the example of house. This picture has been taken from the infrared camera, which determines the heat energy releasing out of the house. So in this picture, discuss with your partners which areas of this house have the best and worst insulation. You can pause the video and discuss with your partners. Well done. A poorly insulated house loses more energy and so cost more to heat. It also means that more pollution, particularly carbon dioxide, is created in order to heat the house. So in infrared camera, the brighter the color means more hot it is. So where it is more hotter, it is releasing more energy and it means this is poorly insulated. This is another example of the house with energy uh, percentage efficiency loss. So 8,000 joule of energy lost in total per year. 25% energy lost from roof. 35% energy lost from the, heat, from the wall. 15% to the ground. 15% from the door. And 10% of energy loses from the windows. So what keeps our homes warm? So insulation is the best solution to keep, in, keep heat inside. So you can discuss with your partners what ways of keeping a home warm are there. So you can pause this video and come up as much as solution, as many solution you can. Brilliant, well done. So there are some solutions and ways of keeping a home warm are there. Loft insulation, cavity wall insulation, pipe lagging, boiler insulation, double glazing windows, thicker bricks, putting an aluminium for aluminium foil panel behind radiators. Um, so payback time is very important terms when we want to um, do some improvements in our house to save energy. So doing these improvements, um, there will be some affordable, there will be something that some people can afford it and some people cannot, or some people need to know that how much it would be beneficial for them and what should we do. So payback time calculation will be helpful for them to think about the improvements. So if cavity wall insulation cost is 500 pounds, so it will save 100 pounds every year. So to calculate the payback time, these two things we need to we need to learn. One thing, how much cost and the other, second thing, how much saving per year would be. Similarly, if drought excluders need 30 pound cost and it will save 20 pound every year, and double glazed windows um, cost 3,000 pounds, but it will save 100 pounds every year. That's the equation for calculation of payback times. Cost divided by saving per year. Each method has a different cost and saving, so we can calculate the payback time by using this equation. If savings are bigger than the cost, then the method is cost effective and worth doing. So use this equation and calculate your payback time and discuss with your partner that this improvement is worth to do that is that cost affecting or not? So you can pause this video and come up uh, with your answers. Welcome back. Now, next thing here we need to learn about the specific heat capacity of different material. Before that, I want you to discuss with your partners which kettle boils first and why.
Kaltan, if you think the kettle with less water, and the reason behind it, because the kettle with the less water has less particles to absorb heat. So that's why the kettle with the less water will boil first because it's, uh, it needs less energy for the particles because there are less amount of particles. So the concept of specific heat capacity is when in a sunny day, the sun is providing heat both at the same time, water and sand, but the temperature of water and sand are different from each other. So this is because of the different materials. So each material, each particle has different capacity to absorb heat. So this is what called the specific heat capacity. If you consider this in more detail, so we can see the sun is providing heat at the same time water and sand. Same amount of energy is absorbed by both water and sand, but the temperature rise for both is different. Sand is much hotter than water. So there is a small temperature rise in water and there is a large temperature rise for sand. Putting the same amount of heat into the same material gives the bigger temperature rise than in other materials. So this is due to have different specific heat capacity of different materials. So each material has different heat capacity, has different capability to absorb heat. If we give the proper definition, so when we talk about the specific, then we need to talk about the specific temperature and specific mass. So specific heat capacity is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram mass by one degree Celsius temperature. So here is the equation of a specific heat capacity. So in short, heat equals mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. Now, using that equation, can you um, calculate the specific heat capacity for these questions? Consider the specific heat capacity of for all question is 1000 joules per kilogram centigrade degree Celsius. And you can pause this video and come up with your answers. Welcome back. Now you can mark your answers. Well done if you got all answers correct. If not, you can try again those questions. Um, here are some exam questions about how to calculate the specific heat capacity. For each question, there is different temperature rise and different specific heat capacity. So you can pause this video for next five minutes and try to come up with your answers. Well done. If you got the answers, now let's check your answers. Brilliant, if you got all answers correct. If not, you can try again. 